What I think I'm going to try to do next is make this radio a little bit more standard as it was when it came out of the factory. Now as I keep saying it was very very common for these radio receivers to be very heavily modified by the owners. They were actually designed to be modified but the work that's been done on here well I'm not going to disrespect the person that did it. Um, it's just that I don't really know what's been done uh, or how they've done it. Now one thing is we've got a crystal calibrator here which consists of this valve here so we don't need that at the moment uh, and also a crystal I think they've got a one meg crystal installed yes which they have which is a one meg crystal just take that out but for whatever reason this crystal calibrator which is for lining up the uh, the front dial scale it doesn't work properly now I've had a, a very half-hearted look at it but basically I don't really like the way it's been implemented I particularly don't like this scabby valve base here which uh, well to be honest yes it's actually been glued in so we don't like that um, I'm not sure whether that's the original crystal holder or not. No, I don't think it is because that's been glued in as well. So it was quite common to add these uh, calibrators, but um, like I say, the work hasn't been done to a particularly good standard. This valve here, this is a, a regulator valve, something like, is it a, an AO2 or something? Let me have a quick look because I forget. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, sorry, it's a 0A2 valve. So this is basically a shunt regulator. It actually goes in parallel with the HT supply and, uh, and once it actually reaches about 150 volts uh, this valve starts to conduct it a little bit in the same way that a neon bulb will strike that's how this regulator tube works it'll reach 150 volts and if you try to put more than 150 volts across it it'll start to conduct very heavily so what you've got is you've got some big resistors here which drop the additional voltage so this will go to 150 volts it will it will effectively start to short circuit anything above 150 volts, and that's how you get the um, that's how you get the power supply rails regulated using this shunt regulator valve. Now, from memory, it isn't the whole radio that's actually got a regulated supply? I'm pretty sure that the uh, the output transformer for the speaker that comes pretty much straight off the uh, HT rail, but both the uh, local oscillator and the uh, the BFO, which is uh, is it that one? Yeah, the BFO and the local oscillator valve over here they're both fed with this 150 volt regulator regulator supply and the reason that they did that is they were trying to stop the um, the output they were trying to stop the frequency of the radio drifting with variations in supply voltage and uh, i think it's uh, it was certainly a worthwhile modification now strangely enough i think when they actually um, built this receiver originally they did actually put the valve base in and I think they may have even wired it up but what they didn't do is give you a valve which seems strange really if you actually need a regulator valve why didn't they put one in I'm guessing maybe they were trying to keep the cost down but I'm not exactly sure so I think we've also got this wire here you can you see this is a piece of coax now this piece of coax it comes from this crystal calibrator circuit and uh, it goes across the top of the chassis and it drops down into the coil box let me just turn the radio over here is the regulator valve there that's the regulator valve socket where I'm pointing at now and then just next to that we've got our crystal oscillator and then here's this uh, coax cable so that coax cable it comes off from the, uh, the crystal calibrator valve it goes along the top of the chassis and then it appears to drop down into the coil box here and it's actually wrapped round I don't know if that's one of the um, the antenna tuning uh, components I'm not sure I haven't got the circuit diagram in front of me but what they've done is they've actually just put a few wraps of the uh, of the inner conductor of the screen cable they've actually wrapped it around this inductor and what they're trying to do is they're trying to loosely couple some signal into it um, again I don't particularly like that I'm not saying it's good or bad I'm just saying that I don't want it and I want to make the radio stock again now it is actually quite likely that I am going to add a, a crystal calibrator to this radio but the thing is if I actually decide to add one you know I want to add it myself I want the enjoyment of doing it and uh, sometimes it's easier to start again from fresh than just try to figure out what somebody else has done now I actually don't think it'll be that difficult to figure out because these were a very common modification and uh, it's actually showed you how to do some of these modifications in the handbook so I'm sure that we could reverse engineer what has been done really quite easily but I don't want to do that I, I, want, I want the uh, pleasure of doing it myself so what I'm trying to do is uh, I've got this coax cable here the inner of the coax I'm just trying to uh, just trying to undo it now very gently from the uh, from the inductor which it's been 
wrapped around just to loosely couple in the, uh, the calibration signals. We're just going to try and take that out, I think. Luckily this uh, this radio isn't too heavy. Now, I was talking to some of my friends the other day on the uh, the Radio Cruncher forum because it's the uh, it's the anniversary of is it VE Day today. And uh, so what we were doing, we were talking about uh, 1940s receivers and old army gear. And I've got quite a collection of army receivers and stuff like that. And uh, but it's actually quite nice. I mean, part of my collection, I think I've got some. Uh, I've got an R107. And I've also got a, a Murphy B40. And those actually weigh in at a hundred pounds. It takes two or three people to lift one. Whereas this, it's actually quite a nice size. I can actually work on it. So it's actually quite nice to work on a, a communications receiver. Which you can actually handle and have on your bench. Certainly, I wouldn't be able to put my uh, Murphy B40 on the bench. It would just it just break my my bench in half. In fact, I wouldn't even get the bugger up the stairs. Now, I had originally planned not to touch any of the capacitors in here because I have done a quick test on them and they seem to be okay. But I've got to admit that Simon Spears has been bullying me again. He sent me an email and he said, you really should recap it. You need to do it. Stop being so lazy or else. So I'm afraid we are going to have to uh, recap it and probably realign it because Simon says so. So that's what we're also going to have a go at doing. OK, so I've just gone ahead and I've cut our coax off and uh, it's exposed a little bit more of the circuit around here. So what we've got here is uh, we've got basically the, the transformer. Here are the two rectifier diodes, which they've got some capacitors strapped across them, which I'm guessing is to get rid of the switching noise. We've got a couple of stages of what looks like a CR capacitor resistor low pass uh, filtering, which is just a smoothing stage. We've got a main three element capacitor under here which is doing a lot of the smoothing. Uh, some of that high voltage goes directly to our output transformer which is, is up here. Now strange enough the audio output transformer it shouldn't actually be installed there, it should be on the opposite side of the chassis. But this was another very popular modification because as it was originally it was very close to the mains transformer, it was next to it on the other side of the chassis. And the problem was you would get direct coupling from the magnetic field into the audio transformer and uh, it would produce 50 hertz ohm. So somebody's actually moved it onto the other side of the chassis and installed it there. Um, also, the, like I say, I can tell that the power supply in here has been messed with. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm just going to try and take that back. Um, it's a little bit difficult to see the wood for the trees at the moment. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to start cutting things away and I'm going to periodically test the receiver still works. I'm going to be quite careful because there's quite a few, all these red wires, a lot of these wires that are red, these tend to be the, um, the high voltage supplies, you know, the 150, 200 volts. So some of the supplies such as the... Um, I think it's yeah, the BFO and the local oscillator, they're run off the shunt regulator, whereas the, the output transform, the audio transformer, it doesn't get regulated. It comes more or less straight off the main smoothing capacitor. So we've got to investigate some of that. At the moment, I just can't see the wood for the tree. So we've got to do some snippy snip snip. And I'm going to peer on if just keep testing the radio, make sure that it still works. So a little bit like unpeeling an onion, I'm, uh, I'm gradually just <laughs> snipping things away. Anything that uh, anything that annoys me is getting snipped off, <laughs> which is most things. Okay, snippy snip. There we go, snippy snip snip. I'm sure it doesn't need all these capacitors and resistors. It's far too many of them. Snippy snip snip. Now I did actually intend to uh, go ahead and pull this valve base out, but unfortunately uh, this valve base has been used to um, join some of the heater wires, the filament wires. Uh, so what was used as the amplifier in the crystal calibrator, obviously it's a valve so it's got a heater supply and uh, it's got some blue and black wires going on to it there. I'm not sure where them blue and black wires go. I've got a feeling they could be dial lamps. Is that where they go up to? Okay so they are, they're the dial lamps on the front of the set. So um, what we'll have to do is, I think we might join them together with some heat shrink or something like that. Um, so I can't pull the valve base out just yet, but we will do at some point. So I think I've got a lot of that, uh, got a lot of the rubbish off now. 
I'm going to leave the uh, the regulator valve, but I think it probably needs. Uh, what we'll do is we'll change some of the components around this regulator because uh, again it's just looking a little bit Heath Robinson. Some of the things are just blowing in the wind, so I think we need to uh, try to do something to improve that just a little bit. Let's get rid of that. So obviously it's much easier cutting things off, much quicker cutting them off than it is putting them back in, isn't it? So I'm just wondering if I can get this valve base out now because it's it's got a lot of adhesive on it. Oh yeah, it did twist then. Is that going to come out? There we go. Sorry, I said the valve base. I meant the base for the uh, the crystal for the crystal and the oscillator. So we've got that out there. And then we will have to remove this valve base here, which is where our uh, crystal calibrator, where our amplifier was for the crystal calibrator. So I think it's a triode or something. So we want to take that off as well, but I can't just pull it off right away because it's got the uh, the wiring for the uh, for these dial lamps routed through the back of the base. But we will do. I wonder if I should do that next. Maybe uh, yeah, maybe we'll do that next. And uh, it's done then, isn't it? Because I want to take this valve base off because it's really horrible. So I think what I might do next is actually just disconnect this uh, dial lamp supply and rewire it off the back of this valve holder because I want to get rid of this valve holder. It's it's kind of it's just horrible. It's kind of just it's not even been uh, fixed in properly. It's just glued and it's all bent to buggery anyway. So uh, let's do something with that. Now unfortunately it appears that there is quite a few other modifications that have gone on and uh, particularly I'm looking at this wire here, this red wire sorry, that feeds the output transformer. Now this actually should be fed straight off this set of rectifiers here, it should take the full HT. But what somebody's done is they've actually moved this wire and they're actually taking it off. Um, well they're actually taking it off another side of the low pass filter, they're taking it off the filtered side of the supply. Now the problem is this particular filter arrangement here, this is the one that's feeding our regulator tube. So I don't really think it's a good idea to have um, be pulling current away from this regulator tube because in theory if we get bass notes and stuff like that you know the valve is going to conduct more heavily it's going to draw more current and the voltage at this point of the circuit is going to drop so the whole point of fitting this regulator valve is to try to make it very independent of any kind of voltage fluctuations but what they've actually done is by rubbing current off this low pass filter arrangement here they're actually pulling current away from our regulator tube now that may not have any effect it may be absolutely fine but what I'm saying is the principle of doing that I don't think that's right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect that modification and I'm going to return I'm going to return this uh, wire feed in the output transformer I'm going to return it to the correct side of the the HT supply which is the unfiltered side what it might do is it might introduce a little bit more mains hum in the set if it does that um, I'll maybe have to think again but that's what I'm going to do I'm going to return it to stock I think well I think I'm now starting to get there with this tidying up uh, exercise I've actually uh, cut away quite a lot of old junk and bodges and uh, I'm about ready to give this thing uh, a test. Now some of the components are kind of, they look as though they're a bit how you're doing, they're kind of blowing in the wind and uh, that's because I before I actually find some of the final positions for some of these components I just want to give the radio a quick test and run it up make sure it's going to work. Um, we've got some capacitors and things just hiding under here which are uh, part of the regulator circuit but I want to put this Ideally, I want to put this wire round, wound resist to this tag strip here rather than directly feeding our regulator tube. And that's why I've just temporarily linked it in. But I want to know how hot this resistor gets in operation so I can make a, a decision of where I actually finally route this, uh, this resistor to. Because I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. I'd like to put it to this tag strip here and then take a short link to our regulator valve but I haven't decided. So there was another tag strip just blowing in the wind here. I've gone ahead and removed that and I can just see the um, the old valve base. That's a pretty nasty horrible valve base so that can come out for now. Right, do we trust uh, putting some power on it? I think we're going to have to. We're about that point. Um, unfortunately the only capacitors that I could buy are rated at 250 volts. Ideally when I work on valve radios I like to put something in 350 volts or 450. Now I think that'll probably be okay because the original 
capacitors that were in there they're all rated at 250 volts so we've got to give it a go with that but if we're looking a bit close to the wind I think we might have to swap them out okay so it's running about 228 volts is that going to fall when the valve heaters start uh, warming up mm, 222 volts that's all the game, but uh, I never actually got approached from Chesterfield Walker um, but uh, I would say you know that those with his one crazy way of playing and he broke his neck in the night so it looks like our regulator tube that's regulating at about 148 volts at the moment well I think while we're in here we'd better go ahead and just sort out this mains cable because I want to add a, an earth to this radio. Get rid of that horrible thing. Might keep the plug. Snippy snippy snip 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 snip. Well I have to say the hole for our strain relief grommet is a bit of a funny shape. It's kind of uh, well it's about half round, it's more than half round, it's about three quarters round and then it's kind of got a, a square section cut out of it so uh, yeah a bit of an odd shape that so I'm going to have to figure out what we can stick in there. I think what I might do is I might try and custom print uh, some form of uh, strain relief that we can put on the cable. Not sure, I'll have to give that some thought. So I've just got to detach now the uh, part of the wire that goes to the switch and the other wire comes back from the switch and it goes onto the transformer down here somewhere. I've got a feeling I might have to disconnect both these wires because I'm going to have to twist them back together afterwards. Well as you can see I've gone ahead and I've just printed off our cable clamp and I think we'll just give it a little bit of a trial run, make sure it fits. Now the reason that I decided to print one off rather than just using uh, a standard grommet or a gland is uh, simply because this hole here isn't actually round, it's got kind of two right angle, uh, two right angle straight sections and then it's got kind of a, a three quarter round section here so although I could have drilled the hole out bigger um, that would have annoyed me so I didn't do it like that. So we've made a custom little strain relief for the cable so that's going to go in there like that. Now it may not show up on camera but this little cable clamp it's also designed to be screwed to the back of the radio just so it isn't flopping around and uh, so I'm going to have to drill a hole there so just to help me line up that hole I've also gone ahead and just made a little uh, drilling template which is just going to fit in there like that and that's just going to show me where my hole needs to be. Oh, don't want it on hammer, that isn't going to work is it? Now the other thing that we have to do is I've actually just got to drill another hole which is for the uh, the earth wire because the original cable that came with this radio it wasn't actually uh, earthed it was just a two core cable and uh, I think it is important to earth these radios with a metal chassis you know it has got a metal body transformer on it and stuff like that so if it was to develop a fault it wouldn't be impossible for the whole body of the radio to become live and that, that could be quite dangerous so um, what we're going to do is we're going to put an earth lug down here and uh, earth the chassis now there is a little bit of a problem with earthing the chassis in that it will actually import it'll bring a little bit more mains noise into the set but um, my outlook on these things is I would rather have a little bit of a mains noise than perhaps risk somebody or myself getting an electric shock at some point. So although it's uh, you know it's not original, I think sometimes safe it's better to be safer than it is to be original. So we're just going to err on the side of safety today, I think.
Well, just taking another quick look at the back of the set here, you can see we've got this selector switch. And what this allows us to do is to actually set the mains input voltage range. So it's got a 120 volt setting or a 240 volt setting. Now, Simon the other day, I think he was playing one of these radios and uh, he unpacked it, put it on his bench and switched it on. And uh, he'd already checked that it was set to 240 volts. But unfortunately, when he was uh, lifting it onto the bench, he'd accidentally caught the slider switch because uh, it's very easy to move these and he'd actually accidentally put it into the 120 volt setting. Uh, luckily there was no damage done but he did comment at how easy it was to actually accidentally knock this switch and make it set to uh, you know 110 which is no good for the UK. But I just wanted to point this out to Simon. You can see that on this radio there's this little metal strip here. It might be, I'm not sure if it's metal or plastic but basically it's a keep plate so that what you would do is once you've set the switch to whatever voltage region you're in either 120 or 240 you screw this plate down on top of the switch and it holds it in position now for whatever reason the uh, the radio that Simon Spears was playing with it must have this catch plate missing well it's snippy snippy snip time again oh we're gonna have to be careful of that that lug on that transformer is very very loose yeah a bit worried about that actually um, got some things we need to unsolder off it though so uh, let's get on and unsolder it. So what I think is one of the slightly interesting things about this radio is that actually the front switch is actually connected to the neutral rather than the uh, positive and that's actually done for a reason. They're doing that because they don't want to take live wires well not live wires but they don't want to take the live of the 230 volt they don't want to take it up to the switch here so they're taking the neutral up to the switch thinking it has less interference whereas the live just comes uh, in via this well it comes in and goes via the fuse and then onto the uh, onto one side of the transformer so again it is I was going to say it's not that unusual to see neutral switching in old radios but certainly you wouldn't really want to see that in a, a modern radio and as I say I am actually going to leave it as it is we could actually uh, modify it so and, and put the switch in the live but um, I don't often like modifying uh, a valve radio uh, unless I really have to and in this case there's only really me that's going in this radio so I don't see that I have to go in here and I don't have to modify it so, so on that basis I'm, uh, I'm not going to uh, yes this, this contact really is very wibbly wobbly I think I might tack some new wires on it but I don't think I'm going to try and unwrap it because I'm terribly worried if we start trying to unwrap this uh, the old the old wires off this lug here I think we might just end up breaking the transformer lug off because it is a bit loose may even put some araldite on this afterwards yeah a bit of butchery gone on down here not exactly sure why but again these radios were very popular when it came to all kinds of weird and wonderful modifications typical thing of just wires which are wrapped round on top sort of layers of other wires makes it quite difficult to uh, work on. I'm doing a lot of moaning today aren't I? Well I know I'm whinging on a bit but I'm actually having a good time. So so I think what we'll put on here in a moment is I've got one of these safety capacitors which of course is uh, it's an X rated for going across the main so it's actually the correct type for this and that's effectively going to go between the uh, the live and the neutral so it is an X rated capacitor so this needs to go down here somewhere. Do we want to fit glue it to the chassis? no I don't think so I think it'll be okay as it is we might just put some heat shrink on it but I think before we uh, do that I think we might just go ahead and uh, install our cord grip so I'm just going to strip the cable off using a Stanley knife now interesting enough it's just made me think I actually got a letter from one of my customers the other day uh, one in London and uh, what they were actually saying is they're not allowing people to use uh, open blades on any of their sites anymore so no Stanley knives or anything like that and I think that was after somebody uh, cut themselves and uh, cut themselves quite badly um, hmm, not sure what I think about that I mean people do cut themselves with knives all the time don't they and uh, well you, you know you should be careful <laughs> that's my opinion we're going to have to get this off
There you go, that's like a bought one, isn't it? Well, it's better than a bought one. So we're going to put our earth wire here. We're going to put a nice loop in it because we always want the earth wire to, to pull out last. Well, I've got to admit, I don't actually think very highly of these cheap crimp lugs. But seeing as it didn't have an earth on before, we certainly have improved things. And of course when we uh, install an earth wire you need to use something like a star washer which of course isn't just to stop it from shaking loose it's also just to ensure that we do actually have some little sharp prongs on the star washer that will kind of grab they will cut into the metal and uh, make sure we've got a very solid earth connection so I brought you back a little bit later because I thought watching me solder these components in would be a little bit boring. So we've gone ahead and we've, uh, we've wired up our fuse, we've wired up the wire going to the transformer. I've installed our X-rated capacitor which goes across the mains. And I'm just bringing you back really at pretty much the final part. So there's, a, there's two neutral wires, well a neutral and a switch neutral that goes back to the transformer. I've just run these on this side of the chassis, trying to keep them away from as much as, uh, you know, the signal wires as I can, but it's, it's a bit tricky. And I'm just gonna bring them up here now, and uh, the final part is, is just soldering them onto the uh, back of this switch. And then I'm hoping that we can give it a, co a go, so it'll either work or uh, all the lights will go off in my house. And uh, well, those of you who've been here before will uh, will know that there's <laughs> a distinct possibility that all the lights will go off in my house because it's happened more than once. I'm not claiming uh, it's super neat this wiring. In fact, I'm a little bit embarrassed with some of it. It was, you know, some jobs go really neatly, and uh, I, I can't really explain it. Some jobs just go really well, and you're really pleased with the results. They're dead neat. Whereas other jobs, you don't seem to do anything different, but. It all just ends a bit untidy. This is really a bit untidy. I'm not really very happy with the installation of these capacitors. Maybe if I was doing it again, I would try and remove the uh, original capacitor, uh, uh, empty out the insides of it and restuff them. I'm not sure whether these would have gone in or not. I'm not, not sure. They probably would have done because you do tend to uh, have a bit of a space saving with modern components, but certainly it's not really the best way to install these capacitors like this and just everything at this bottom end of the chassis with it all just being on tag strips it just looks just looks a bit messy or it does to me anyway right okay that's our uh, switch connected so in theory all we've got to do now is uh, install a 13 amp plug on the end of here and uh, Bob's your uncle Well, I don't know if you're about to see this very well, but I'm just on with replacing the capacitors on this board. And uh, I'm replacing both the electrolytics and the old paper capacitors, because you may as well do it when you're in here. It's a little bit of a struggle trying to get this board out, actually, because it's got this shield plate that's soldered on in a really kind of awful and random way. And uh, a lot of the wiring is just kind of falling off. I've had to desolder a lot of the wiring to try to get access to... Uh, this circuit board, it's, it's one of them jobs where it, you know it's not really uh, cooperating with me as much as I would like, but um, yeah, I think we're getting there slowly. In fact, I'm just having to find some way to just try to uh, tie this board back because it, it just wants to uh, it just wants to fight me this thing. <laughs> now, now just to be more annoying, a lot of the component legs on here they're not just push through. Uh, if they were just push through, I could just get my desoldering tool on and. Uh, you know, suck the solder off them and I could have these things out in moments but not only have they uh, pushed them through, they've pushed them over and then they've bent the legs over and there's quite a lot of length of leg left on them so it's uh, it's just really tricky to uh, to get them unsoldered. So what I'm having to do is trying to get in there with some solder braid and uh, wick the solder off and you know waggle the component around. It's been actually quite a long time since I've used uh, solder braid. I don't I don't use a lot of solder braid these days but I've got to admit even though this solder braid is getting old, getting uh, old I think I'm gonna have to order some more braid because it's it certainly helped me out quite a lot on this job it's because uh, I just can't get in with the solder sucker. 
Well, for you guys playing along at home, it's probably only a moment later, but for me it's probably uh, closer to two weeks. Because amazingly enough, I've actually had problems getting hold of this 4.7 uh, nanofarad capacitor. Just nobody seemed to, uh, to have any of them in stock. Um, waited on RS, um, didn't have any in Farnell, just you know, a general problem at the moment. A lot of components are on back order. So what I actually had to do in the end was um, I actually ordered them from a new company. This company was called uh, Switch Electronics, which was uh, they were recommended to me by Graham Radio Cruncher. And I've got to admit, they did, uh, they did indeed come through for us. So uh, yeah, a bit of a thumbs, thumbs up to uh, Switch Electronics. They seem like quite a good company. Now I know that I have actually been complaining a little bit about this radio and uh, it's actually a very easy radio to work on. It's just that because somebody's done modifications to this, um, it's actually made it much harder to work on. The actual, I think I mentioned it earlier, the actual audio transformer for this, it's actually installed under the chassis down here and uh, it's getting in the way. The audio transformer shouldn't be installed down there under the chassis, it should be installed on the top of the chassis. But somebody's, um, somebody's modified it and as I think I said earlier, the reason they did that modification was to reduce uh, mains hum on the original um, output transformer. So that's what somebody's done and uh, unfortunately it's just getting in my way somewhat. And I'm sure you guys know sometimes solder braid gets a little bit old and uh, when it does you've got to kind of just re-impregnate it with some flux. I think maybe the copper oxidises a bit and uh, so this solder braid that I've got here it's just not wanting to cooperate at the moment. But hopefully by putting a little bit of flux on there it should work some magic and uh, do what we need. Okay so that's one of the legs out now I've just got to disconnect this other wire here which I think is feeding the output transformer. Now I should be able to install my long awaited capacitor and here it is. I'm not going to bother with any of that outer foil nonsense it's going in as it is. And this other remaining blue wire here, that goes back to the uh, to the power supply. And uh, I decided to cut that off because I couldn't lift the board without it. So let's uh, just put another of those back on. Now I'm afraid that this is just one of those jobs that's taken uh, you know far too long. Sometimes you get them jobs on the bench, don't you? They just take a lot longer than you would hope. And it's especially always annoying when you've got to wait for uh, parts for arrive, isn't it? It's always frustrating. Well, I'm hoping you can see this radio has actually got this shield plate and I can actually see it's kind of soldered in and it's another thing that gets in the way. I don't know if this is original or uh, an addition. I'm guessing it's original, but kind of a lot of the wiring just pushes under it and it's a little bit unsatisfactory really. But yeah, I don't think I'll, uh, I don't think I'll modify that. So let's take our yellow wire off. Now I think what I might do, I mentioned this aluminium blanking plate here, hopefully you can see that. It does actually fit very close to the circuit board so I think what we might do is, uh, just for peace of mind, I might just go ahead and put a bit of uh, cardboard or insulation on here because uh, you know, we don't want the bottom of this circuit board to short out. I think I've cut all the pins quite short, but it, it seems like a good idea to me to do So that. I've just gone ahead there and I've installed my piece of cardboard here, and I'm hoping that we can now close this up. And, uh, yeah, I'm hoping none of the other wires fall off. So I've got to be a little bit careful just closing this up. OK, I think that's it. need to get some screws in quickly while nobody's looking. Well, as you can see, I've replaced all those old paper capacitors and also replaced the electrolytics. And I've gone ahead and I've just screwed the printed circuit board down. So let's go ahead and give this thing a test. Now you'll probably remember that actually band C did work on part of the band but it actually stopped oscillating when we turned it down so let's go ahead and just tune to the opposite side of the band see if it still works. Yeah well it is still working. Is there any stations? Come on, must be a station somewhere. 
It's actually receiving SSB transmissions a lot better, and uh, the BFO has been much improved. But the radio does still seem somewhat deaf. Now, it could also be, you never quite know, because obviously I'm doing some on-air testing. The bands today are in absolutely awful condition. So really, before I condemn it, I probably need to just try it on a better day. And also, the uh, the antenna that I'm using is also pretty awful. So it's not got anything really stacked in its favour, has it? But it is working. I think the volume has come up. Let's try it on the normal broadcast bonds. They could take over my gym to muscle up before the invasion, or a wrecking crew with the sole aim of preventing myself and my family from preparing ourselves to defend our quiet Surrey village. I just want you guys to know we are now patrolling night and day, ready to defend our green and pleasant land. Your listener and ally. Traffic and travel on Talk Sport with Swinton Insurance. We'll help. I did join the army, but I joined a different army. Uh, I joined the one with the condos. And the private room. Sa de forța gândurilor împinsă înapoi după cortina de fier. Papa predică în pustiu implorând spiritul fantomatic care și el se ține la distanță, contemplându-și propria singurătate. Now I've gone ahead and I've actually switched the radio on to band C. Now if you remember, this is where we started that band C didn't actually work. So we've we've gone ahead and we did fix the problem with the local oscillator on band C. We've gone ahead and we've replaced all the electrolytics and the old paper capacitors in this. And I think overall the radio is working quite a lot better than it did before. But I would still say that there's a there's some room for improvement. Now, unfortunately, it looks like the mica capacitors that I've now actually ordered from three different places, none of them seem to have turned up. So <laughs> I really don't know what's happened to them. But I've got no intentions of uh, aligning this radio more than once. So I think what we'll do is we'll put this radio away in its box for now. And uh, when I can eventually get a replacement mica capacitor, we'll get the radio out. We'll do a, some sensitivity benchmarking and then maybe we'll have a go at doing an alignment on it. But I think for today we've really done enough and uh, as much as I love the old trio, I'm pretty sick of the sight of it now. So he's going to go back in his box until uh, until it's ready for alignment. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, little video on the trio. Um, but until next time, thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you all again very soon. But until then, bye bye for now. <laughs>